Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. This is a 2000, year 2000, Kawasaki KX250, and what we're going to show you how to do is put the power valve together. These are the uh, components of the power valve, and these are, this is probably one of the most ignored parts, especially on these older bikes. I know you guys, you want to ride it, you don't want to maintain these things, but this is so critical to proper engine performance and maximum, uh, maximum power. These need to be cleaned at least once a year, preferably twice. Um, get all the, the carbon buildup off of it, throw some oil on it, throw it back together. Some people are intimidated by this stuff. It's absolutely critical that this is timed correctly, and I'm going to show you how to do it. This is really, really easy. This is the first component we're going to install. This is the flapper valve. It's what's in uh, the top of the cylinder. This controls the top, the uh, exhaust port height. And as the engine revs up, this will pull out, create a create more exhaust port area. And when your RPMs come down, and you're just taking off whatever, this valve closes up and uh, decreases the exhaust port area and the, the port height, obviously. All right, the first step here is going to be very difficult. You just uh, get this valve in, just drop it in, push that in. Next step, you take some uh, Loctite 243, just blue Loctite, and we're going to put a little bit in these threads. These are the retaining bolts and washers for the flapper valve, and they go in next. Get those bolts tightened up, and then just check for uh, nice free movement. These are the next components. Uh, this is going to actuate the flapper valve, all of this stuff. This, gear, uh, this shaft, gear shaft, whatever you want to call it, is uh, driven off of one of the valves for the sub-exhaust. And this, in turn, will drive this. And this is going to drive this fork. And that's what's going to make this open and close. So what we're going to do, this is the hole we're after. We're just going to take this piece. And you can see on this end, it's got a flat for a screwdriver and it's got a let's see if I can get this closer right here it's got a little indication line indicator line that line is going to have to line up like this so the dot in the gear I'll show you how we put it together a little light coating of two stroke oil and all the parts and this, as we talked about earlier, just slides into this hole with the flat for the screwdriver sticking out and sticking straight up and just go ahead and push that in all the way. Next step is just take this fork and just slide it right in there with the hole for the bolt facing up. Again, light coat of two-stroke oil and you're going to take that little dot you're just going to line that dot up, push it through the fork, and line that dot up with the indicator mark like we talked about when we first started. And that's what you should have when you're done. The line and the dot are aligned. Next step is go ahead and put a little blue Loctite on that shaft and uh, just put your retaining screw in there. All right, now that you got this far, you can put this little retaining cover in here and just, um, I don't use Loctite on this, but I am going to hit it with an impact wrench when I'm done. Just a little tapered Phillips head screw and get that nice and tight. Get this far, just check it, make sure everything's moving nice and smooth. Next thing you're going to want to do is flip the cylinder upside down and we're going to assemble the components for the uh, sub-exhaust ports. One thing I might want to point out, these little E-clips, see them, there's two of them. That's the best way to store those. These are really small parts and uh, they have a tendency of getting lost. And uh, just store things like that and that way you'll have your parts when you need to put it back together. Go ahead and install the end plug. It's on the opposite side of where the uh, small end of the shaft goes in. Just put that plug in, tighten it up. No Loctite, just tighten it. These are the two block offs 
for the sub exhaust ports and what I like to do first especially on something this old because people have been in here and they grab these with pliers to pull them out just take some 220 sandpaper and knock all the burrs off the ends of these next step is to lightly oil everything with two stroke oil down in here all the gears the rack and this valve I want you to note that one gear say that one tooth sticks down further than the rest that's an indicator and what you're gonna do I gotta get me a cameraman is just drop this in with that tooth sticking straight out and when you push it down that engages the first mechanism for the flapper valve you want to make sure when you do this that that power valve it's all the way shut. Just take it and drop it right in there. So you're not probably not going to have freedom of movement right now, but that's going to come in a little bit. Same thing with this one. That one tooth, that's an indicator mark. Same thing we did with the other one. Just take it and drop it right in this hole. This should be a little easier because you don't have to engage another gear and just drop it in there with that tooth pointing this way. All right, here's our rack and you've got an indicator line here and you've got one here. This line is going to line up with the tooth, the short tooth on this part of the valve and that line is going to line up with the short tooth on this part of the valve. When you install the shaft, the rack, the teeth are going to be facing the back of the cylinder and you get to the first gear, just lift it a little bit. You should be able to get it in there at some point and then just let it go and it's not going to bother anything. At this point, you pull this gear up and just push that shaft in and it'll stop against this little plug. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but here's where we're at. You can see that short tooth lining up with that indicator mark. And then on this side, it's the same thing. This gear is not meshed with the rack right now, but that's what the next piece is going to do. And uh, again, I can't stress this enough. If you're at this point, that flapper valve that we assembled first has to be fully closed. It has to be in its lowest position. So double check that and then I'll show you what we do next. This gear we pre-lubed and you can put this in any way. Just make sure that the indicator mark on that gear is still in alignment yeah, this is hard. It's still in alignment with the uh, mark on the shaft. You can't see that but it is. If you got that far you're, you're in the home stretch. Next thing we want to do is put these plugs in and I use this stuff, this Pro Circuit seal and o-ring grease. Just take a little film of it and uh, wipe it around on the o-ring. Next step is to put this plug into that hole and just push it down until it's flush. Same thing on this side. And you take a little half moon, drop it over that gear, and just push that until it's flush. If you have difficulty pushing the uh, bushing in past the o-ring, you just take a take a little socket and just give it a little tap. Make sure if you do that that you don't peel the o-ring off. Uh, you'll see it right away, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta tap them a little bit to get them in there all the way. Next step is to install the seal and the bushing. You're gonna see this has an o-ring. That goes in first and then the seal on the outside of the cylinder. And again, I'll just put some uh, PC seal o-ring grease on it and just slide that right over it. Once you have your seal in, just put your retaining screw in. And again, I use an impact on these these, uh, this is actually an aftermarket screw. I get these right at Napa. Seems like um, the, the stock ones are just, they, they fall apart. I mean, you take them out and they strip really easy. So we get this big uh, 
It's kind of like a button head with a Phillips on the end of it, and that's what we're going to install. Next step is to go ahead and install the Eclipse, and then put your uh, little piece here that the actuator hooks up to, and get that thing on, put your next Eclipse on, and we'll make sure everything's working correctly. Once you have everything assembled, uh, the final test is just pull this actuating rod all the way out, as far as it'll go, and that's the sub-exhaust. You have to make sure that that is completely open and the flapper valve in the top is maxed right out to the top. When everything's closed, that has to be closed. Your flapper valve has to be down. Something like that. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. KennelConnorRacing.com. Um, one other thing I want to mention if you, if you have a problem setting this up, nine times out of ten, these, uh, these gears are only made out of aluminum and they do wear you know, over time. So if, if things aren't lining up, first step is to go ahead and replace this part, this one, and this one. And uh, if, you, if you don't want to do that, there's ways you can actually trick this. And what the, uh, what the whole scope of everything is, is when this actuator is pulled out, you want everything opened up to its max so that you get the proper airflow, just like that. Again, thanks for watching. KennelConnorRacing.com.